Welcome to Mastering Solutions. In this general problem, they tell us that a flea reaches a takeoff speed when it jumps of one meter per second over a distance of a half of a millimeter. For part A, they want us to know what the flea's acceleration during the jump phase is. Let's start by making a list of the variables that we're given. And so they tell us that the final velocity or the speed that it reaches at the end of the jump is one meter per second. And the distance, or the delta y, is 0.5 millimeters. That's not in standard units, though, so we can change the milli to what it stands for. And 0.5 times 10 to the negative 3 meters. And now we're in standard units for the delta y. Kinematic equation that we'll be using is v final squared is equal to v initial squared plus 2 times a times the delta y. It's good to think about why we're using the different equations that we do. In this case, we don't have any time given. And if you look at the, the kinematic equations, all the other ones have time in it. So this is the only one that we can use for this. We're trying to solve for acceleration. So let's isolate A. The initial velocity, however, is zero, so we can get rid of that. And then we'll divide both sides of the equation by two delta y. That will cancel. And now we'll be left with acceleration is equal to the final velocity squared divided by 2 times delta y. We can plug in our numbers to that, and the final velocity they tell us is 1 meter per second. That will be squared, and we'll divide that by 2 times a delta y of 0 0.5 times 10 to the negative 3 meters. So we have 1 squared, which is the same as 1, divided by 2 times 0 0.5 times 10 to the negative three, which gives us an acceleration of 1,000 meters per second squared. So there's our answer for part A. For part B, they ask us how long does the acceleration phase last? Now we're trying to find a time. So we need to use a kinematic equation that has time in it. So we'll be using v final, which is equal to v initial plus acceleration times time. And this, if you think about it, is the same as the acceleration basic formula. It's just broken up a little bit. All they did was they expanded out the v final minus v initial or delta v and added over v initial to the other side. We need to isolate t though, so let's move v initial back over by subtracting it from both sides of the equation, which will give v final minus v initial is equal to acceleration times time. And to isolate t, we'll divide both sides of the equation by a. And so we have time is equal to v final minus v initial over acceleration. The v initial, though, we already talked about is 0, so that can go away again. So all we're left with is time is equal to v final divided by the acceleration. So time will be equal to the final velocity we said is one meter per second, divided by the acceleration that we found as 1,000 meters per second squared. And when we have meters per second divided by meters per second squared, what it is is two fractions divided, which is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal, of course. So that is the same thing as meters over second times seconds squared over meters. Now the meters will cancel, the seconds will cancel, and one of the seconds up here will cancel, leaving us with seconds over one, which is the standard units for time. And so it's a double check that we did our math correctly. So one divided by a thousand gives us 0 0.001 or 1,000. So 0 0.001 seconds is how long the acceleration phase lasts. And then for the last part, part C, they say if the flea jumps straight up, how high will it go? And we're going to ignore air resistance for the problem, where, like they say, it's true in reality, air resistance does play a large role, so it won't actually get this high. This is just a theoretical height if it, um, air resistance obviously isn't a factor. So for part C, we're going to use the equation that we've been using already, v final squared is equal to v initial squared plus 2 times the acceleration times delta y. And in this case, what we're trying to solve for is the delta y. How high did it go? So let's move v initial squared over by subtracting both sides. So we have v final squared minus v initial squared is equal to 2 times the acceleration times delta y. 
And to isolate delta y, we'll divide both sides of the equation by 2a. So delta y will be equal to v final squared minus v initial squared divided by 2a. When we plug in our numbers to it, we'll have delta y is equal to the final velocity is zero, because if you think about it, when it's jumping up the first half of the jump, it comes up to here and the v is zero. The initial velocity is here, so that can go away. So we have negative v initial, which we know is one meter per second. That will be squared and it will stay inside of the parentheses and that will be divided by two times the acceleration but in this case the acceleration is gravity because the only thing that's acting on it after it jumps is of course gravity so it's a negative 9.8 meters per second squared because gravity is pointing down in this case so when we plug that in we have negative one squared and then we'll divide that by two times the acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared, which will give us a delta y of 0 0.051 meters, 0 0.051 meters, or we can put this into centimeters, which is one, two, so 5.1 centimeters. So however mastering physics asks for the answer, here is the answer for part C for the theoretical height of how high the flea will go if we ignore air resistance as a factor.